defense are winning their battles consistently. Mike and Mike, let's get some straight talk here. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. A very interesting thing happened this week, and it got very little attention because it happened on a winless team. Miles mm. um, Garrett is the number one pick in this year's draft. And the questions that came up about Garrett when we were going through the draft yeah. process, and you had some of them, Booger, mm -hmm. as much as absolutely anyone, yes. and this is a phrase that people in the sport love to use, does he love football? Yeah. What does that really mean? What it really means is, is he willing to give up absolutely everything to play it? So Miles Garrett this week self-diagnosed a concussion. He self-reported a concussion. And... I'm fascinated to see what the overall reaction is going to be to that around the league because the reaction should be good for him. Good for him. This is the one issue that we cannot have in football. Right. Young football players should learn from that. If you're a high school football player, you should learn from that. This guy's the number one pick in the draft, right. and he felt like he had a concussion, and he self-reported it. But I guarantee you that in offices around the league, there are guys going, see, that's why I didn't buy into him. I want my players, and I'm, I'm quoting Brian Urlacher on our show right now, but we know there are a million others who said, I would hide that with everything I had. I would make sure no one knew I had a concussion. I would do everything I could to try and hide the fact that I had a concussion mm -hmm. so I could get out there and play on Sunday. And so I think that that is an interesting litmus test. A, the players who would versus wouldn't self-report a concussion in 2017, and B, the reaction that people have to it. Booger, your thoughts? Greeny, I think there's going to be a line, and there is a public perception and a private perception. The public perception is going to be just what you said. You know, great for Miles Garrett. This is what you should do. This is what we want our players to do. Yep. But when you close that door in the locker room, there are a lot of players going to look at him and say, you soft. You're really soft. You know why? Because how many times do you think I've gone on the field with my bell a little rung? How many times have you think I've gone on the field with my faculties not really all there? But now here you are, the number one pick. We've guaranteed you 30 plus million. And now you're going to self-report a concussion when we're trying to battle from this hole we're in? That's going to be the private, private perception inside the locker room. And not a lot of people are going to be willing to say it publicly because they'll get ridiculed by the people that are going to say, yeah, but it's your head. It's your brain. That's most important. And I think that's the difference that we're going to see. Publicly, everybody's going to say the right thing. But when that door closes in that locker room, there are a lot of guys that play with broken bones, that play with pain, that play with so many different things, bleeding. And here this guy is. He's going to go tell the doctors, you know what? I don't really feel good today. My bell's kind of wrong. Well, you know what? Guess what? My bell was rung a lot, and maybe I was wrong for playing through that. I've seen several guys on my team play through that, and I've never seen a guy self-report it. Is it the right thing to do? Absolutely. Is it the wrong thing perceptionally in the locker room? Absolutely also. If I'm not mistaken, one of his comments was something about, like, you know, children in his future one day and, you know, wanting to make sure that he was there for them. And It sounds like Derrick Rose almost. Which is exactly where I was going to go. Exactly. Well, Remember the, that was Rose the. If I'm not mistaken, that, that may have been one of the turning points in the Derrick Rose Chicago Bulls era. Derrick Rose, obviously the former MVP, and like there was a time where people thought they might have a statue next to Jordan for Derrick Rose if things went as they had hoped for in Chicago, as you know better than anybody, Green. And all of a sudden, now that's a point. That is a, a quote that Derrick Rose will never be able to detach himself from in the, in the mind of some Bulls fans is that he was thinking about his young son based off of his knee injury where you should be thinking about getting back out there and, you know, dribble drive and kicking out to whoever the Bills or whoever, whoever his Bulls teammates were. And for Miles Garrett, uh, you know, maybe this goes somewhat unnoticed because the Browns have so many other almost comical storylines surrounding them, not the least of which is that A.J. McCarron – trade that was oh not my god yeah yes <laughs> but i mean that people need to watch people need to go back and watch the video of chef to, on your show yesterday or whatever it, yeah yesterday morning. it was yesterday wow um but i i don't I, i'm with i book i think booger has, has pinned the tail on the donkey here right like we should applaud him for what he's doing we on the outside have every right to applaud him uh, and should applaud him for what he is doing i also think that one of the realities is there may be some guys on that team that are saying like you know something? Not sure I would have done that myself. A lot of guys on that team also might be saying it, and if Mike Golick was sitting here, I know he'd be saying it, that I don't have the luxury of doing that. Yes. Because if I – he's the number one pick in the draft. 
When he feels okay, he's getting right back on that field. Right. If Mike Golick had self-reported a concussion during his career as a 10th-round draft pick who was fighting just to stay on the field, he might never get back on the He'd field. He'd be cut, probably. He, he, he might, well, he might get cut. Yeah. See, and that's the thing. So you've got, you've got a whole bunch of different people whose perspective on this needs to change if we're really going to attack this problem. We either have to, this, this, is, this could be a line of demarcation here, guys. We have to decide, do we really care about head injuries in football or not? Do we or do we not? Because if we do... Then if there is a price to be paid for self-reporting a concussion, if the price to be paid for self-reporting concussion is the general manager and the people who run the front office and everyone else saying, you know what, that guy's not tough enough, that's not the guy we want on our team, get rid of him, then no one's going to do it. Right. And what it means is that we're really not taking this seriously. We're saying we take it seriously. Right. We're making the quote-unquote politically correct statement yeah. about head injuries, but we don't really care. Miles Garrett can do anything. He's got a huge guaranteed contract. He's the number one pick in the draft. He runs no risk of not getting an opportunity when he comes back. What, we have to, what has to change, if we're really going to change the way this works, is that that same zero risk has to apply to every player in the locker room. But it doesn't, though, Greeny, because every player in the locker room, like if, if, if every player, let's say guy 52, okay, who's a special teams guy, right. he's a foot soldier, okay, let's say he has a concussion, he self-reports, let's say he out, he's out two weeks, guess what, that's two weeks of a roster spot that's taken up by a guy that, you know what, is really interchangeable. True. So every player's not afforded the luxury of a Miles Garrett that's been the number one overall pick and guaranteed 30 plus million dollars, so it's never going to be equal when it comes to that. Some guys are just going to have to suck it up, and Golick would tell you, when you're a foot soldier, you have to do things that the number one picks just can't do. You have to do things that the number one picks don't have to, and so you have to understand that the football mentality, most of the coaches in the National Football League uh, are not millennials. They're of the old school mentality. The guy that I played for, Rob Marinella, he would tell you, listen, hamstring on a nose guard, not acceptable. Otherwise, play through it. There are things you have to play through, especially at a, as a defensive lineman. We're the tough guys on the field. We're the physical guys. And no matter how you look at it, there are guys in that locker room. There are guys on the Browns coaching staff. They're going to call this young man soft. They'll never say it publicly, but privately, I guarantee they're going to say it. Straight Talk Wireless nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Yes, the same people who couldn't get the information about their trade for A.J. McCarron <laughs> into the league in time will be describing how Miles Garrett got this one wrong. Field final word. I, I just I can't get over that story. And what, what's crazy to think about the Browns and Bengals trade that was or was not uh, was not is that like we may not know all the information yet. Like there might be more layers to this that have come out. And but like I, I also think that if, if if part of the spin is that like emails couldn't be like coordinated, like if we're if, if the idea there is to say that so that people in the you know the public sort of buys it and it's like oh now I get why this trade couldn't have gone through. Come on. You expect me to buy that the reason why this trade couldn't go through was simply because a couple of emails got crossed? Because the Wi-Fi didn't work all of a sudden. Come on, you know? As someone has, point, as someone has pointed out many times, like, the Browns front office is made up of, like, you know, Sashi Brown, who the football czar there, he was a Harvard Law guy. He's Like, he's edgy, like come on. I, I don't buy, like, to me, something, something smells very funny. I think people should go back and watch Schefter's video again from this show yesterday morning. Listen to it. Watch it. Uh, it's it's a bizarre story. That we'll play that. You know what? You make you make a good point. We should play that back again, and we will coming up later here this morning. Field Yates, we will see you later as well. The podcast. Give me the podcast information. Fantasy today. Focus Football Podcast. We're going to preview every single game today. All right, nice very advice. good. Make sure you hear that today and every weekday. Uh, coming up next to the center of all the big sports news with the terrible injury in Houston yesterday and the magnificence of the parade today. We go live to Houston after this word from ZipRecruiter.com. All right, two questions. One, are you hiring? And two, do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? With ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just